We're going to show you up close a titan of the plant world next. Titan Arum, to be precise. That is the official name for the largest flower in the world, a flower that can take as long as 10 years between blooms. When it does bloom, though, you probably recognize its other name because it raises quite the stench. It's called the corpse flower. And take a look at this. <coughs> Excuse me. McMaster University's greenhouse has never had one fully bloom before, but it does right now. And it is an opportunity for us to say hello to a very special guest, uh, Susan Dudley, biology professor at Mac, and coolest job, she's the faculty supervisor for the greenhouse, and she's right in that greenhouse for us live this morning. Hello, Professor Dudley, hello, Susan. Good morning. You know, every every year when we talk, we show pictures of corpse flowers, but I have never done an interview live with someone standing right beside. So there it is. Yeah, it's quite something. You can see the tall spike, which has the flowers on it, and this really broad modified leaf that's the attractive structure, the called the spathe, and the the thing is here that it is trying to look and smell like rotting meat to attract its, attract its pollinators, which are carrion beetles and Okay, uh, stop right there. Stop because we need to really, we need to understand that. When you said that's the attractive part, I was thinking that may be attractive. The smell is not, though. Everyone talks about how bad, I mean, corpse flower. What does it smell like to you right there, right beside it? It smells like rotting meat to me. It does. But People who have experienced corpses, they say that's what it smells like. Rotting flesh, rotting meat. Should you be having a mask or anything? How long do I have with you before it gets to be it gets to be overwhelming? It's, it's just <laughs> now. So no no bacterial putrefaction at all. It's just trying to pretend like there is. Okay. So explain for us the science of why this flower smells so bad. So it is so most flowers that we see are pollinated by things that share our aesthetic sensibilities. So, so bees and butterflies and birds like pretty colors and sweet scents. But things, there are many flowers that are, that are sort of carrion flowers that are pollinated by flies and they are trying to look and smell their best like raw. Just hold on for a second. Maybe we'll get Professor Dudley back. Shall I wait? Could we have, oh no, listen, hold on. We're just gonna correct this. We're gonna call again, because we need to explain this to you. I have so many more questions to ask. So would you stay with us? We'll be back on CBC News Network. Hooray, we have reconnected with our guest at McMaster University, Susan Dudley, who's a biology professor there, the faculty supervisor for the greenhouse, which has a star attraction just behind a couple of students, a corpse flower in bloom, uh, a rarity. Nice to see you again. Hi, Professor Dudley. Are we we're all Hi. good? Oh, good, because I have more questions to go. But hey, listen, we were talking about the smell, and you just happened to have some students who are there taking a look at things, so I thought we should do a random survey, guys. Hello, good morning. Good morning. What does that smell like behind you guys? Well, um, it smells quite awful. Um, <laughs> <laughs> It does hold up to the name quite well. The um, some people didn't want to be in the room last night uh, as it was blooming due to the smell being so intense. But if I were to describe it, it would smell um, very like full-bodied, strong. <laughs> um, this is it's like you're giving wine tasting notes. It's full-bodied. It's so. Is it like rotting flesh or, or diapers or or plant matter or? I can't smell um, it. That's the one thing I can't do from television. I can see it, but I can't smell it. Like rotting flesh. Yeah, more like rotting flesh. Rotting flesh. Yeah, okay, people great. get fish note from it. Okay. <laughs> okay, thanks for stopping. Uh, you can go about your day, but thanks. We just wanted to get some other descriptions. Anyway, back to you, Professor. You were telling us that because this is attracting flies and carry-on bugs, that it wants to look like it's some sort of uh, in state of putrefaction. What else is unique about that particular plant? Okay, so it heats up to send the smell. What's really unique is the size. But the, it uses that size, that tall 
spike to, to heat, you know, and heating up to send the smell for kilometers. So in its native Sumatra, it might attract flies that had visited another carrion flower and are therefore carrying uh, pollen with it. So when you talk about its size, I was mentioning its, its official name, Titan Ara, because it is a titan in the plant world. How, how big, how much does that weigh? So this, this one is uh, 1.8 meters, pretty heavy. So when, when it's done, we'll dry it and weigh it out and find out how many kilograms it weighs. It's really amazing is the below ground part. So when we planted the below ground bulb, it was 50 pounds, so 20, 20 some kilograms, and it's probably half again that big by now. Isn't that incredible? I mean, that, that grows at a speed that can you actually almost see it growing before your eyes? Um, it, there were periods when it was growing 20 centimeters a day. Like this all happened in a week and a half from when it was a, a little over a meter tall and we went, oh no, it's a flower to uh, the size it is now. Isn't that amazing? And then how long will it stay in full bloom? So actually today, sometime today, it'll start to close because part one is exposing the female flowers and attracting flies from far away. Part two is kind of keeping those flies close to the male flowers, which will heat up and give them a heat reward and release pollen so that when the bloom dies off, the male flowers will head out and go pollinate something else if, they're, if the plant is lucky. Hence the extended hours at the greenhouse and people like your students coming there to see it because it's such a rarity. Listen, I want this is perfect because we can see it so clearly. At the base of the flower, there's a square cutout area. Explain what that's all about, Professor. Okay, so we had people from the Toronto Zoo come and bring pollen from their uh, corpse flower, Pablo, who bloomed a couple of months ago. So they cryogenically frozen it four different ways. And so they're trying those four different ways on four different areas of female flowers to see if we can get babies, basically. Amazing. So they were on call and they dashed out starting at 4.30 when we knew the bloom was happening. And then we'll find out. This isn't a kind of stench that permeates your clothing, is it? It is. It is. Well, thank you for doing that, standing up there so close uh, for that extended period of time with us. What a treat to meet you and to hear all about this, Professor. I appreciate it. Okay, my pleasure. Big excitement in Hamilton there. Professor Susan Dudley, who's a biology professor at Mac and the supervisor of the greenhouse where there is now the full bloom corpse flower.